I guess you haven't skipped a rock in a while, huh, Ray? No, I'm uh, definitely out of practice. Still, there's something mesmerizing about ponds like this one here at the edge of Newton, New Hampshire. Yeah, I know what you mean. The way the water reflects on the sky, it's, it's pretty. This is Country Pond, but this isn't the pond we're looking for. No? All right, where are we headed? So we're going to head southeast of here to where a pond used to be. That's an odd destination. <laughs> right. A pond used to be where we're going. <laughs> it's probably good that it's gone because a tragic event happened here that changed the name of this small body of water until the day it ran dry. Ray, we're looking for Suicide Pond. I'm Jeff Belanger, and welcome to episode 253 of the New England Legends podcast. And I'm Ray Osher. Thanks for joining us on our mission to chronicle every legend in New England one story at a time. We're glad you're with us. We're always on the hunt for strange tales, legends, haunts, and other places where history has left a mark. And did you know that we get most of our story ideas from you? Like this one. Thank you to Jessica Labica, who grew up in Newton, New Hampshire, and told us about it. We appreciate whenever you reach out to us through our website, through our social media, in our super secret Facebook group, or, you know, telepathically. <laughs> but to be fair, we miss most of those telepathic messages, so best to reach out in other ways if you can. We also appreciate it when you post a review for us or share the podcast with a friend or two. It's how our community grows. Also, be sure to listen to After the Legends, the second half of this week's story, where we take a deeper dive into the legends and sometimes veer off course. Just sometimes. Hey, just a warning that this week's legend does feature suicide as a theme. If you're sensitive to that subject, you might want to skip this one. Now, before we go searching for this infamous pond, we want to take just a minute to tell you about our sponsor, Nuati Herbals. There's no question that a great cup of tea can lighten your mood. Even the process of making it, you know, boiling the water, steeping the tea, and sitting for a few minutes. It's therapeutic. This week, we've got to tell you about Laughing Coyote Tea from Nuati Herbals. Now, the coyote is known as the trickster, but he teaches us that laughter is truly the best medicine. Laughing Coyote Tea is made with all natural ingredients like hibiscus flowers, green tea leaf, lemongrass, rose hips, juniper berries, spearmint leaf, stevia leaf, and other ingredients all mixed by hand by a family-run business. Nuati Herbals also offers Laughing Coyote Cream. Now, if you want the full effect, rub a little of this all-natural cream on your pulse points, on your neck, your inner wrists, on your chest and arms, too. The cream is soothing. And the scent of the natural ingredients will lift your mood. So many Nuati Herbals products have become a daily part of our lives. We could all use a little self-care every day. A cup of natural tea and some soothing balms and creams can really make a difference. Let Nuati Herbals help support your healthy lifestyle. Check out the Nuati Herbals website to see all their great products. And, of course, you get 20% off your order when you use the promo code LEGENDS20 at checkout. Visit NuatiHerbals.com. That's N-U-W-A-T. T-I, herbals with an S, dot com. All right, Jeff, if the pond we're looking for is dry, how do we know where to find it? <laughs> yeah, so we only have a few clues. That it sat between two barren hills is one clue. But the reason we know anything about this pond and the tragic event that took place here is all because of a New England poet named John Greenleaf Whittier. Oh, okay. Well, that's a person we've quoted before in other episodes. Yeah, we have. I mean, he's a legend unto himself. Whittier was born in 1807 in Haverhill, Massachusetts, which is just the next town south of us from here in Newton, New Hampshire. Whittier wrote many poems about legends and lore, which explains why we've quoted him more than once. In fact, his first book of poetry, published in 1831, was called Legends of New England. Well, he kind of stole our name, didn't he? <laughs> clearly. Clearly he stole our name. And if he were still alive today, we'd probably be friends. Now, the reason we're here, the reason we know anything at all about this tragic event is because of Whittier's poem titled Suicide Pond. Given this event happened just a few miles from his home in Haverhill, it clearly left an impression on the prolific poet. All right, then let's head back to the year 1819 and see this pond. It's early June of 1819 here in the small town of Newton, New Hampshire. June is a month for weddings, of course, and one local bride-to-be, she's nervous. Well, that's normal when you have a wedding coming up. Hannah Chase of Newton, New Hampshire isn't so much nervous for her wedding, but because her father does not approve of her groom-to-be. Well, dads can be a little overzealous. Sure. No man is good enough for my daughter, and that's kind of a thing. Sure, and it's not unusual either, but... Hannah has her wedding dress together, the jewelry she's going to wear, a wedding date, it's just days away. But as each hour passes and the wedding day draws closer, Hannah's father is growing more furious. Folks in Newton adore Hannah. She's a 
very pretty girl and, and very kind as well. She's generous with her smiles. Everyone in town is happy for Hannah's nuptials. Everyone but her dad, it would seem. Now, with the wedding imminent, Hannah's father is telling his daughter he simply forbids the marriage. And it's more than Hannah can take. It's the evening of June 12th when Hannah wanders away from her home. She walks about three and a half miles southeast into Haverhill, Massachusetts, where she finds a small pond nestled between two hills. She's dressed in her finest dress. She's wearing her pearls. She glances at her engagement ring one more time, then slips into the water. She swims herself out just beyond where she can stand and slips below. The following morning, Sunday, June 13th, Hannah Chase is found dead in the small pond. Her family, her community, and everyone who knew her are crushed. A formal inquiry is made into her death. The findings are published in a single paragraph that reads, quote, Miss Hannah Chase, a beautiful and amiable young lady, age 22, committed suicide by drowning on the 13th of June. The verdict of the jury was thus. Her death, for aught that appears to us, was by sane suicide unless insanity came suddenly upon her, of which it is impossible for us under existing circumstances to have knowledge. Now, I've never heard of a sane suicide, no. but I understand the jury's point. They don't suspect foul play. Hannah seems to have made this awful decision by herself. At the time of Hannah's tragedy, poet John Greenleaf Whittier was 11 years old and living in Haverhill. This was the kind of event that everyone would hear about. It left an impression. Enough of an impression that he never stopped thinking about it. Now, from here, we jump ahead 15 years to 1834. Whittier has just published his poem titled Suicide Pond. The first stanza reads, "'Tis a dark and dismal little pool, and fed by tiny rills, and bosomed in waveless quietude between two barren hills. There's no tree on its rugged marge, save a willow old and lone, like a solitary mourner for its sylvan sisters gone." Whittier's poem captivates not just the region, but everyone who reads his work. And pretty soon, the small pond where Hannah drowned starts to be officially called Suicide Pond. Whittier's words are haunting. I'd like to read a few more stanzas. And why does the traveler turn aside from that dark and silent pool? Though the sun be burning above his head and the willow shade be cool? Or glance with fear to its shadowy brink when night rests darkly there? And down through its sullen and evil depths... The stars of the midnight glare. Tis said that a young and beautiful girl with a brow and with an eye, one like a cloud in the moonlit robed, and one like a star on high, one who was loved by the villagers all and whose smile was a gift to them, was found one morn in that pool as cold as the water lily's stem. Ay, cold as the rank and wasting weeds which lie in the pool's dark bed. The villagers found that beautiful one in the slumber of the dead. She had strangely whispered her dark design in a young companion's ear, but so wild and vague that the listener smiled and knew not what to fear. That almost sounds like she said goodbye to her lover before she took her own life. And she went to die in that loathsome pool when a summer's day was done, with her dark hair curled on her pure white form and her fairest garments on. With the ring on her taper finger still and her necklace of ocean pearl, twined as in mockery round the neck of that suicidal girl. And why she perished so strangely, there's no mortal tongue can tell. She told her story to none, and death retains her secret well. And the willow, whose mossy and aged boughs over the silent water lean, like a sad and sorrowful mourner, on the beautiful dead is seen. At a time like this, a misty form, as fog beneath the moon, like a meteor glides to a startled view, and vanishes as soon. Yet weareth ever a human shape, and ever a human cry, comes faintly and low on the still night air, as when the despairing die. Hmm, that last stanza seems to imply Hannah's ghost still haunts the pond. Hannah was buried in her family plot in Newton, New Hampshire, and once everyone in this region started referring to this small body of water as Suicide Pond, it's safe to say her memory, at the very least, haunted this hallowed spot. And that brings us back to today. The pond is the kind of place that would spook you for sure, yeah. I mean, especially by walking around alone. The reason we know roughly where Suicide Pond was located is thanks to our friends at Special Collections Department of the Haverhill Public Library. 
in their digital archives, they found an 1892 photo from Austin P. Nichols that shows the small pond and a sign that reads, Suicide Pond, Miss Hannah Chase, drowned June 13th, 1819. You can see the image on our website. Just click on episode 253. Now, to be fair, Hannah's father's disapproval of her wedding is only speculation. It's the rumor that's circulated around town. We may never know for sure what happened. A century after Hannah Chase's tragedy and decades after Whittier's poem was published, the pond vanished. The vanishing even made the newspapers because of the famous poem. Check out this January 30th, 1919 article. Okay, it reads, Suicide Pond of Whittier's Time is Nearly Run Dry. Suicide Pond, that dark and dismal little pool made famous by the poet Whittier, is nearly gone. Outlets made by farmers for irrigation purposes have reduced the pond to a shallow stream. People living in the vicinity always have had a gruesome awe of the pond, which stood between two barren hills. Women and children, recalling its dark history, always shuddered when they passed it after sunset. Uh, Suicide is something to fear. It's an illness, and there is help. Well, if you need help, please reach out to the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800-273-8255. There are people who care about you. Besides, we need everyone we can get in our community. We can't afford to lose you. So true. A century ago, this pond ran dry, taking away the physical reminder of the tragedy tied to a famous poem by a New England treasure. But here's the thing. Had Whittier not written that poem, there's no way we would have ever remembered Hannah Chase or the pond that vanished. And that brings us to After the Legend, where we take a deeper dive into the story and sometimes veer off course. After the Legend is brought to you by our Patreon patrons. Our Patreon patrons are a group of insiders who have kept us going and growing for years. For just three bucks per month, they get early access to new episodes, plus bonus episodes and content that no one else gets to hear. They're our lifeblood for sure. From our hosting and production costs, marketing costs, it takes a whole lot to keep New England Legends running. Our Patreon patrons, they make it happen. If you can help us out, just head over to patreon.com slash New England Legends to sign up. We'd certainly appreciate it. Hey, also, if you want to read the entirety of Whittier's Suicide Pond poem, uh, just head to our website and click on episode 253. We only read some of the stanzas. It's it's long. There's more? There's more. Oh, exciting. I I love it. Um, By the way, there's a museum to John Greenleaf uh, Greenleaf Whittier in Haverhill, Massachusetts. Mm. It was his home in a museum, and you can visit it. And if you love stories like ours uh, and you want to go way back and see it in rhyming verse, I mean, this was like the the Stephen King, (laughs) if he were a poet, uh, you know, in the mid-1800s, right? I mean, this is a guy that that we would have wanted to have hang out with for sure. Um, And then uh, also uh, his book, Legends of New England, here's just some of the poems, some of the titles. Uh, The Murdered Lady. Right. Uh, the Weird Gathering, The Haunted House, we're in, right? Sure. Spectre Warriors, Spectre Ship, The Human Sacrifice, uh, and The Mother's Revenge, just to name a few. And by the way, it's all public domain. You can get that book just about anywhere, including online, if you want to uh, check it out for free. Um, he's absolutely a, uh, a treasure for sure. His home is in Amesbury. Yeah. So, um, but you know, and then I lived there for quite some time. You well, then you were you were maybe I had no in, idea, no idea that you were <laughs> influenced maybe by him from from long ago, right? Um, but think about it. Like this event would have taken place, and I, I got on Google Maps and looked. I don't know, three or four miles from mm. his house in Haverhill. And I, I mean, if you're an eleven, twelve year old kid, and you go to the pond where someone did this, yeah. I mean, it's you know, I mean, absolutely, that's going to leave a leave a mark forever. Um, I remember when I was, when I was probably about that age, 12 or so in the center of Sandy Hook, Connecticut, a, uh, you know, that town drunk got yeah. passed out into a, a, the stream that runs beneath the Ooh. bridge and he died. Oh, that's sad. But you know, we were, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's a horrible, scary, scary thing. And, but I remember just being like, wow, that's, that's, you know, we, we saw, we saw the body. Like, I mean, the police that's were already there. So stand by me. I know, I know. But it was right in the center of town. Like, I mean, this is, it's yeah. not like you had to go miles in the woods. It was right there. The police were there. Everybody saw it. Like you, you just, you saw what was happening. Um, we, and, lo- we lost a kid my age mm-hmm. in East Brookfield on the train tracks. Oh, yeah, that's horrible. It was, it was a dirt bike accident. So oh, wow. that's what rocked my community as a kid because I was 
12 or 13 at the time. Tell me you went and you saw those train tracks later. Like oh, absolutely. Other it, it was hard to, to stomach because right. you knew what happened right there. Right there. And you look and you're like, whoa, this is this thing that happened. And that's the profound nature of this. Now, suicide's a touchy subject. We, of course, wanted to include the suicide hotline yeah. in the episode because um, it's an illness, <clears throat> right? And that's the worst part is that it, it can be a... Uh, it can be contagious among peer groups. That's what people don't think about, right? I mean, uh, once one friend does it or whatever, yeah. others start thinking about it. And it's it's such a tragic thing, a, a tragic loss. And uh, I, it, it's it's awful. I mean, I've, I've lost friends to suicide. And it's not, um, you know, please, please don't put us <laughs> I think it's that. easy to believe that there's no hope or think that there's no hope, right. that no one loves you, that no one cares. And we've all been there at one point. Like, what a horrible day. Yeah. You know, it would be so much easier if. Right. But think of the people. If anything, think of the people that you're affecting. When Ray signs off on the radio every day. Yeah. What's stay, the last thing he stay says? Stay safe. Stay healthy. I love you all. I love you all. Yeah. He tells and us I do. every day. I do. He tells us we love you all and we need you. We yeah. need you around. It's it's so important. And so, um, uh, you know, and, and when we were talking about this story, we we're like, does it romanticize? It doesn't, right? It haunts as it should. I think the um, because it's a poem, I think we think, oh, it's being romanticized. Right. But this guy was a little dark, as we mentioned, Stephen yeah. uh, Stephen King, and he had the same kind of, right. you know, if he could make movies, there'd be a movie about something like this. Right. Um, so it wasn't, it is romanticized because it's in a book of poetry. Right. But at the same time, no, it's just dark and eerie. And, and his word choices, too, it, it is dark and eerie. And, and, and you can imagine him being a teenager and going to that pond. And, and, and so what's so cool is, as, as we were doing some research on this, the Haverhill Library uh, was awesome. They, they, they have this special collections. And you can see, you, you, if you go there today, you're not going to find it. And we know what road it's on in Haverhill. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's a little neighborhood now. But you're not going to find it. It's gone. Yeah. It, it's just gone. There's houses. There's nothing to see. Uh, however, the, your best look is going to be on our website uh, to the photo that the Haver Library is allowing us to use. Um, nice. And it's, you can see it's just a small little pond between these, these two hills. Mm. And, but someone put a sign. And the, the, the photo's from 1892. And you can see the sign. It says Suicide Pond, wow. you know, Hannah Chase. And so it, it pretty much officially became known as that. Which is, I mean, imagine that's near your house. Like, oh, there's there's Suicide Pond. Like, like you bought the house because yeah. there's a quaint little pond in the back. Right. Oh. And now it's Suicide it's Pond. Suicide Nobody Pond. Nobody ever wants to come over. Right. Nobody wants to go swimming in the pond. Yeah. And that's the thing that haunts us forever. Whether you believe in ghosts or not is sort of irrelevant. Like, this, someone's life was lost right here because of some horrible, you know, tragic moment. Not even a legend. It happened. It happened. Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely it's happened. A fact. Um, and that's that's the kind of thing that uh, that leaves a mark, and that's why we keep talking about it. Suicide Pond, that's um, yeah, it's long gone, but but not forgotten because of a poet by John Greenleaf Whittier. Please be sure to subscribe to our podcast wherever you get your podcasts because it's free. And be sure to share these episodes with a friend or two. It's how our community continues to grow. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Nuwadi Herbals. Thank you to our family and friends for putting up with us. And our theme music is by John Judd. Until next time, remember, the bazaar is closer than you think. 